Good morning, hello again and welcome back. Um, I'm Mel, I'm back at my allotment garden today and before I do or say anything else, I need to give it a really good soaking and then I'll be back. Right then, it's time to whack on the sunnies. The watering has been done and I'm gonna spin you around and show you what my first two jobs of the day are going to be. They're nice and simple ones, but I think they are the most important ones to be getting on with. I've brought with me today this spaghetti marrow plant that has, I mean, look at how much it's managed to grow in this tiny pot. And this is the middle bed that I am going to be continuing with today and that I've sort of partially completed. I'll explain that mess there at some other point. But first thing I want to do though is I've got this mound of mushroom compost and I just want to plant the spaghetti marrow in there so that it can carry on rambling its way across the bed. The second thing that I want to do is on these sections of the allotment that are actually relatively neat and tidy is I just want to go in and pull out some of these odd weeds that have crept in. So I'll be doing that on this section here and then also some of these that have crept up in my courgette bed look at the state of that poor little courgette at the end there <laughs> the others have all done okay but if you remember this section of the bed has had a load of mushroom compost on and it kind of stops about here so the things at this end are struggling and the mess and disaster that is this end of the the um the bed i will be working on but i want to get a couple of little straightforward jobs done first and then we will reconvene and discuss what's going to happen over here. sunglasses on or off I don't know you might I think you're gonna to have to talk to the big fly eyes <laughs> at the moment so I thought I would tell you about my little bit of allotment drama <laughs> which turned out completely fine so you know everyone relax but my my whole allotment nearly got taken away <laughs> nearly got given to someone else completely in error as it turns out but I got a message from an email from someone on the allotment committee who said, um, I think someone's just been like shown your allotment and given it as their new one. Someone who's been on the waiting list rather. I was just like, well, what, what makes you think that? And she said, well, someone's messaged us and said they've been given an allotment that's near the water source, has a cherry tree, but they feel that someone's already looking after it like they think it's an active one which I'm taking as a compliment because I'm not sure anyone would have thought that last year or the year before but yeah so they think it's they think it belongs to someone because they described wood chip paths and some courgettes and things being grown there she said it sounds like your allotment um <laughs> can you like remind us of your like the number of your allotment and um, confirm that that is definitely yours which then sent me into a panic because I'm aware that I've like I've left this grassy bit at the back that you can see and I'm kind of quite happy with that but I do know that the rules of the allotment are that you have to keep it tidy and you are supposed to cut all the grass down and stuff so I thought maybe they've taken my allotment away from me without notifying me or something or maybe they've tried to notify me and I just didn't get the email and it's in my junk mail so I kind of went through all of that couldn't find anything then I, like, I sent my plot um, number back to the allotment committee, but also with a screenshot of one of like my last invoice, which has my allotment number on it and my name and everything, just to confirm it. And then, um, sorry, someone's just walking past and I was talking quite loudly there. And yeah, so I did that. And then I took a screenshot of my payment to show that I am up to date with paying for it and everything and that payment doesn't run out until the end of September of this year and I didn't hear anything for a couple of days then my partner who'd gone for a walk and walked past the allotment texted me to say there's some people like looking at your allotment like going around your allotment and looking at it and I was like oh my god we're two days later and this still hasn't been sorted out and they're still trying to give my allotment to someone else so I then contacted the allotment team on the council to get confirmation 
that it's definitely not being given to someone else and that there isn't a problem. And what I didn't realise is the allotment committee were already kind of on it as well. And I did finally get a confirmation that everything's fine. Everything's sorted out at their end. It's not going to get given to somebody else. They have all of my details correctly. I am paid up, etc, etc. But it was the first time I actually felt really um, possessive over the allotment. And I got really scared about it being taken away from me. And I think it has kind of done me the world of good in it, that it's made me realize that this year I feel differently about it I'm using it more it's not great it's not perfect or anything like that but I'm getting some produce from it I'm getting some joy from coming over here and you know the pleasure of having an allotment I'm just glad it was sorted out and I'm glad that I still have it so anyway <laughs> the next job on the allotment this is my allotment <laughs> um, is coming up next and uh, yeah let me show you what that is Okay, so we have got, oh God, <laughs> can't see where I'm going. Right, so the spaghetti marrow is in. It's looking a little bit sad and floppy at the moment. It's had one can of water. It will have a load more throughout my time here. And all I've done is I've taken up a lot of the weeds, little bits of bindweed were creeping in at the edges, sort of along here. Um, and then also along here. Actually, what I did notice I was going to show you is the difference in all of these courgettes that we've got in this bed. I thought I'd planted out courgettes and spaghetti marrows, but I've realised that I got muddled up with what I brought from home. You can tell from the growing habit that these two are actually courgettes, not the spaghetti marrows that I thought they were. Whereas this is the spaghetti marrow because it's kind of crawling um, along the bed and it's got the little tendrils that will grip if I want to grow it up something, which I probably will do next year. But yeah, so these courgettes then. So we've got a sad little one at the end here that has produced a courgette but is looking really sad and it has been watered and it's now been about 15-20 minutes since I watered it and it still hasn't perked up so that was looking a bit sad and then as we come here this is the self-sown something I'm assuming a courgette actually now looking at it and looking at its growing habit but it hasn't really come to anything it hasn't flowered or anything like that so that makes me think it might be just a self um, self-sown seed from perhaps like an F1 hybrid or something like that and they don't grow true to the parent plant so it could be something like that going on with that one and then these three here are the three shop bought ones 75 pence each plug plants from Asda um, ambassador courgettes they've gone in and they're already producing look you can see that I've got I'll probably pick that one actually i've got one courgette there there's another one growing there another one on the other side all of these if you can see there's one under there all of these asda courgettes <laughs> have started producing but the plants are really quite small and then look at these two enormous these are homegrown ones they just started flowering so they are a lot later in terms of producing fruit but the size of the plant and the health of it so you can see here i mean courgettes get this all the time I'm never entirely sure what it is but it always looks like it's some sort of sort of mildew or fungal problem whereas over here these ones that I have grown from seed are looking incredibly healthy and look if you look in the middle there you can see I don't know if you can see actually but there's lots of flowers about to kind of pop out on these ones so they're going to be a little bit later but actually I think that's going to work in my favour because it's going to stagger the courgette glut that I never get, <laughs> never get a courgette glut. And I think it's because I use, I just use them so much. Um, the other thing that's finally come up is I sewed a line of spring onions down the middle here and it's come up really patchy. Well, to begin with, nothing happens at all for weeks, but then I've noticed that they've just completely shot up now. Um, they are, of, co of course, loads of them have come up right underneath this courgette plant and then the nice bare open bit of soil that they could make the most of, they have not come up there. That is, that's spring onion logic for you. Spring onion logic. Um, but yeah, so the next thing is this. This just horror show at the end here. I've got cabbages that I think I'm gonna have to take out because they um, had aphid problems and I just didn't deal with it. I think, and this is, this is typical, this is a lazy garden, I think. Let me like face you with my honest face on. 
and tell you why I think this has kind of gone to crap at this end. Okay, I've got my honest eyes. I'm gonna go and put my sunglasses down so you can see the actually squinting in this light, the squinty honest eyes. I didn't look after those cabbages in all sincereness because I couldn't be bothered to take the net off. That's really lazy, isn't it? I couldn't be bothered to take the net off and kind of keep going sort of inside the net and weeding and sorting them out. So what I'm thinking is because I've identified this lazy characteristic, lazy gardening characteristic, I think rather than having the hoops with the net over, I mean, obviously I'll persist with this for this season because that's what I've got and I'll try and make the best of it and try not to be quite so lazy about it. But I think I need a series of frames that I can just pick up and lift off, get underneath, do whatever I need to do, whether that's monitoring, like checking stuff and then dealing with any problems that arise, doing a bit of weeding and then pop the cage back on because like I'm pinning all of the oh god what are they called like the hook things that go into the ground i've got the got rocks around the the edge so taking all of that out and then trying to get underneath the netting i'm i'm just not doing it i'm just not doing it i'm being i'm being a lazy little so-and-so about it so yeah i think we'll be making some netted cages next year but today's plan then is i'm just going to lift all of that off take the net off I've brought some canes for either the tomatoes that are there or the runner beans that are in the other bed. I need to weed everything. I'm going to check to see if there's any survivors, anything that's worth keeping in there. And then if there isn't anything, that's okay. That's fine. I've brought some broccoli plants to go in their place. I can already see there is a white, a white cabbage butterfly. <laughs> it can smell the broccoli that I've brought over leave me alone go away actually it's settled on a courgette okay that's fine you settle on a courgette as much as you like but just don't come near me and my broccoli so you can bet your bottom dollar as soon as that net comes off i'm going to be batting away that butterfly and its little friends that will come to the uh to the brassica party as well but yeah so a load of tidying a load of sorting i'm just going to very quickly show you again what it looks like at the moment we'll do a before and after because I can't, okay, so for two reasons, I don't have a proper tripod. I've got this tiny little travel Joby tripod that I used to use when I made videos on a different channel. And I was just sat at a desk and I'd have the little tripod on a pile of books and it worked fine. It's not really any good for out and about at the allotment or in the back garden. So I need a better tripod. But also because it's so hot today, if I leave my phone on, recording me doing stuff it has a tendency to overheat and that's not really any good either so um yeah so i'm just gonna just gonna pop you to one side and get on with this okay so here is the shocking <laughs> shocking mess again half dead peas along the front half dead cabbages in the middle half dead tomatoes at the edge and um some weeds that that sadly aren't half dead they seem to be the only thing that's surviving. So here's your before and hopefully I will be back, well, very quickly for you guys just to show you the after. And then we're back and this is what it looks like at the moment. So I haven't done that little strip on that side that's got a couple of tomato plants in it. I will go around and do that in a moment. But as predicted, there were two cabbage white butterflies flying around and as soon as they found the cabbages and the broccoli they would not leave it alone so I kind of had to do this really quickly and get the net back over the top look there it is there, there it is it's one of them that's one of them <laughs> and they were so determined to get in and I kind of thought I can't leave this exposed for very long so I've got a strip down the side here that I have brought some seeds with me that I will sow in a little row along the edge there I've tidied up the cabbages a little bit. I feel like I shouldn't really call them cabbages because they do not have much cabbage or many cabbage-like qualities, as in they're about golf ball size at the moment. There's one that is tennis ball size. Oh no, two of them are about tennis ball size, I would say. But they have got much kind of firmer innards, hearts than I thought they had. I was going to tear them all up, but what I thought I would do is I've planted the the broccoli sort of in and around the cabbage and I'm going to leave the cabbages in for another couple of weeks and just see what happens if they get a little bit bigger and firmer then that's fantastic they can stay in you know a little bit longer still 
but oh hello you're not gonna get them look it's two look at them two of them just just go away get lost shoo anyway yeah we're just gonna monitor the cabbages and if i can get i don't know what have i got six in there if i can get six tennis ball sized cabbages i'll take it that that will do the other thing that i've done is i haven't used the little metal pegs to peg it back because i realized that that was one of the like the barriers the sticking points the friction they were part of the friction of getting in there because when they go into the ground i mean they're great in the sense that they really pin it down to the ground but they're quite difficult to get up i was having to lever them out of the soil with the trowel so i think that was part of my problem and i've just i folded it up along the edge now and i've just got the rocks and bits of slab and brick and stuff on them i'm gonna go with that and see if that's enough to keep the cabbage whites out i don't know if it will be they might kind of creep underneath but we will see and then i think that gives me much much quicker and easier access to this section i'm more likely to keep an eye on it okay so oh squinty squinty mcsquinty here um they're gonna have to go back on because otherwise i can't really i can't face you um next job then is i'm gonna have something to drink i'm gonna have a little something to eat as well because i'm starting to feel the heat it's 11 o'clock in the morning and we're heading into hottest part of the day territory so quick snack something to drink and then like another hour here and then i think we'll be sort of done with it my concern my concern with today is that my july sort of target for the allotment was maintenance and I feel like today most of what I'm doing is maintenance. I am going to sow some seeds down that little strip down the side here. I have planted out the spaghetti marrow but apart from that I feel like it's just been maintenance so I really want to get on and make progress in August. So what I'm hoping to do in the next hour is, um, can you see in the middle bed I don't think you can, I think you see the edge of it there. Um, so this middle bed that's beside me here is I want to get, I brought some cardboard with me and I want to get some more of the cardboard down at least. I also want to do a little bit of quick measuring just using my feet. Um, I haven't brought a tape measure with me. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about, first of all. Yes, I'm talking about these two beds here. Um, I've got this one here. Can you believe that that courgette is actually getting worse? It's had a second dousing of water. I'm wondering if there's a big old ant's nest or something underneath it, something that's stopping the roots from um, kind of getting the water and stuff. I don't know, we'll have to see. I mean, luckily I've got all of these ones and they look perfectly fine. So um, this bed here, I think is narrower than that one. And I want this one to be the same width as this one. So all I'm gonna do, and actually let's do it together is, I'm just gonna step along here and work out how many of my feet it is wide so it kind of starts there so that's i'm just trying not to fall over <laughs> one foot two foot three foot four foot oh almost exactly almost exactly five of my feet so i will walk along the edge of this one but i need to move some of those slabs um first we'll walk along the edge of this one i make sure that this is five foot wide and then bring that in slightly there because i think this one's kind of set out to be wider get some more cardboard down perhaps along there or maybe sort the end part out i'm not sure yet but yeah i want to make some kind of progress today not just maintenance i have finally made some noticeable progress on sorting out this middle bed i'm looking at it now and it doesn't look particularly straight but i will straighten it up properly when i come to put some compost on top but it's there and it's it's kind of ready it's ready for some wood chip which they have just had a new delivery of wood chip so i can go and grab some of that and sort the path out what they haven't had is another delivery of the mushroom compost yet so i'm not sure when i'm going to get to that section i've also not extended it as far up as this one um partly because there are two massive lumps there that i think were or possibly still are ants nests and they will need dealing with when the ground is a lot softer so i probably won't finish that off just yet and also i definitely think that this area here is going to be some sort of seating area for me and i might even put some 
um, some framework or something over it so that I can have some climbers and just have a little sort of private area over there and it might mean that this middle bed stays a bit shorter and then the third one which will be where all of this long grass is will be a sort of full length one again. So that remains to be seen kind of how that turns out. Now I brought three short bamboo canes with me. It was all I could find in my garden. I've got one here with the very tangled up runner bean plants. I think when I can bring another couple in, I'll form a tripod and then they're so tangled up that actually if I try and tease them apart now, they'll just, I'll, they'll break off and I'll kind of, I'll lose everything. So I will just sort of wrap them around whatever tripod I kind of managed to come up with. There is definitely something up with that courgette, something serious that is basically killing it. I'm going to pick the courgette that's on this plant before I go. And then I've also put bamboo canes in for um, the two tomato plants, which I didn't realise. I've actually got a couple of decent tomatoes on this one. There's another one growing there, but I think that's struggled a bit with the heat and my irregular watering. And then I noticed that the flowers on this one had all dried out and dropped off which is what happened to my ones at home during the heat wave i think i'm going to give everything a really good soaking again because i know i can't come back for at least another day possibly two days i also haven't watered let's have a look actually at the flower patch at the front here it's do you know what it hasn't turned out as well as i was expecting i had really high hopes for it but so many things are flowering at such different times and then things like the phacelia have kind of dried and gone to seed and actually i do need to make sure that i shake shake this seed around and then the cosmos hasn't come out the cosmos is really struggling in the heat it definitely needs a really good soaking there's the zinnia there i don't know it just <laughs> It just doesn't look as good as I expected. There's some dill here, um, which I can actually smell when I get kind of close to it. So yeah, I'm not 100% convinced that this was the flower mix for me. Um, oh, one thing I was going to do is I noticed over here, there's some aquilegia that has gone to seed. Can you hear that? Um, so I'm going to kind of grab that take it over here and then just kind of sprinkle it actually I'm going to crush it I think and just make sure that you've got some aquilegia seed in what I hope is going to be a self self seeding flower bed every year so yeah I'm just going to do that scrab Ooh, the rest of those what I also did is I popped over to the shed where people put all of their spare garden kind of materials, tools, seeds and things like that that they don't want anymore. And I found a small amount of these, what are they called, beetroot boldor. So they're yellow beetroot and I don't have any yellow beetroot in my garden. I have got a couple of varieties in my garden, but not this one. So I've sown them in this drill down the side of the cloche and I don't know if you can see I've sewn them very kind of sparingly very thinly through here but yeah should get a few few beetroot from a kindly allotment neighbour. Right I'm back and I thought I'd show you what I'm gonna have for my lunch so I've just grated some double Gloucester cheese these are the spring onions that I picked from the allotment and then this cucumber fantastic cucumber is one that I've grown in the back garden in a pot actually one of the things that i want to do is to make a whole video about growing veg in containers i've got my yorkshire tea which has got something floating in it i don't quite know what that is but anyway um and then this is a courgette that i picked from the allotment as well but i'll probably have that for my dinner today so yeah just need to clean up the spring onions get my sandwich made and then i can sit and relax hello and welcome back it's editing mel here who realized that I didn't do a proper outro to the video. In fact, I finished it really strangely um, without much of an ending at all. So I'm sorry about that. I just came in, I made my lunch, which I think you, you've just seen a, a tiny little clip of and promptly like forgot everything. But yeah, I just thought I would recap. And then also what I wanted to do is I've just upgraded my phone that I do my recording on. And I've started recording this without plugging in a microphone or anything, just because I wanted to get an, an idea of the difference between 
my like the sound quality with the Sony lapel mic as opposed to just what the phone can do itself and I thought if you're going to experiment like that Mel do it at the end of the video when quite frankly a lot less people are going to be watching it. I've got a half a cup of tea left at the moment and I thought I would just you know I'm already comfortable but I thought I'd make myself even more comfortable with my cup of tea and just do a, a kind of a recap or a summary of where I've got to with the allotment in July. So July was just a busy month in general in terms of life stuff and quite a lot in the back garden. I have a container veg garden and you know that takes quite a lot of watering and looking after in the type of weather that we just happen to have this year. Normally it's not too much of a problem. We get rain, the container stuff takes care of itself most of the time, maybe a little kind of drink of water from me, but at the moment it's drink of water from Melanie like every day, sometimes twice a day. Um, so that that's quite a lot, but I did manage. So my, my main July goal for the garden and for the allotment was just maintenance, just staying on top of things. I knew that, you know, I had a few bits and pieces coming up that would take me away from the garden. I'm also reaching the point of the year where I need to build up my vintage jewellery shop that I, I have online. Um, I'll see if I can put a link. And basically I'm shifting quite a lot of it from eBay to Etsy. It's not really why people are watching these videos, but if I do manage to get some of it transferred to Etsy, I'll pop a link to that shop in the description. Just I don't mind if you want to go and be nosy and and see what I'm up to. It might not be there by the time this video comes um, out, but at some point, if you check in the description, it probably will be. Anyway, back to gardening. <laughs> um, so that's that's some of the stuff that was yeah just taking up some time. I had a birthday thing with my mum, which was a couple of days. Um, I've caught up with some other relatives as well. Um, yeah, it's it's just been a bit peopley and a bit a bit busy. So. Managed to maintain things. The watering wasn't too bad. The flower patch at the front, like I said in the main part of the video, just disappointed. I think what's happened is that they were growing so densely that the roots have kind of, you know, it's like a, a mat of roots rather than there being much of the compost left on top of the cardboard. And where it's been really dry this year, the cardboard hasn't rotted down at the rate that it would do normally. So combination of factors, as it usually is with gardening, has led to a lot of that drying out, looking a bit limp, even though it is being watered fairly regularly. And what I also didn't like was the dominance of the phacelia in the flower mix. What I thought I might do is I have got some seed that my dad and stepmom have saved from their garden and also some seeds that I have stolen <laughs> that I've pinched from their garden when I've been around there. So I thought I might try and make my own homemade flower mix. I also got some um, Sweet William uh, seed from a neighbouring allotment where that had like they'd left left that to dry out and go to seed and stuff so I've got some of that yeah just I, I thought I was going to have a really pretty lovely flower patch and it just looks a bit grim at the moment so I'll see if I can rescue it but not not overly happy with that a bit a bit disappointed with that and there's also the um the potatoes that are growing in the middle of that flower patch that at some point I'm going to have to I have to dig them up and break through that cardboard. Not yet, but at some point, probably this month of August. What else have we got? Courgettes and marrows are looking um, are looking good, apart from that odd one in the corner. That the only thing that really seems to be wrong with that bed is there's a section that dries out. In that dried out section, I get quite a lot of ants' nests. So it could be something to do with one or both of those that's caused that particular courgette to kick the bucket but I'm not too bothered because the others are all looking good. The chilli plants are looking pretty good as well. The runner beans we know I need to get some canes for and just sort of somehow heap them up onto the canes so that they actually um, aren't growing along the floor. And then that that brassica bed, I don't even know if I can call it that, <laughs> the brassica bed that's got the feeble little broccoli plants that I put in and the incredibly enfeebled cabbages, which are, yeah golf ball to tennis ball size they're they're pretty awful aren't they <laughs> they're pretty terrible but 
Oh, do you know what? It's, it's, if I if I get something a bit cabbagey, <laughs> a few cabbage leaves to use in a soup or something, that'll be fine. I'm going to uh, I'm going to try and improve the condition of the soil in that bed as well. I've got the net back over it. Definitely need to make a nice couple of frames or maybe like maybe three sort of smallish frames that I can stack along the um, the bed for next year. Um, I've got those two tomatoes, one of which has got a couple of tomatoes growing on it. I had, you know, a few little spring onions from there. There's still a few pot marigolds. Um, hanging on for dear life and yeah the bit that I'm most pleased with is the part where you can see I've made a fraction of progress on the middle bed and I may have mentioned in the video that there's been a massive load of wood chip delivered again so what I plan to do next time we are at the allotment together is I am going to go and grab a load of that wood chip I've got a load of weed suppressing membrane and I am going to create the seating area. I mentioned in like a very early video when I started laying the paths that I use the weed suppressing membrane to begin with, cover it all in the wood chip. And when I'm fairly sure that the, the weeds have been suppressed enough, I actually do recycle that weed suppressing membrane. I kind of take it out from um, underneath and then I'll just have the wood chip on the ground. One of the main reasons for doing that is that I find all types of weed suppressing membrane tend to, um, um, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? They basically, like they shelter slugs and snails and in an ordinary year, not so much this year, but in an ordinary year in the UK, I'm plagued by slugs and snails <laughs> for at least a good, like a good chunk of the year. And yeah, it just, it's an invitation for them to go and go and sort of hide and make themselves comfortable underneath that. So I'll have it there for maybe a year to 18 months. It will suppress the majority of the weeds. I can then whip it out and it will just be the wood chip. So yeah, so I want to create a seating area or just, yeah, cover over the area where I've got, I've got a, you know, I've got a crappy little table and a couple of crappy little chairs and what would be nice maybe towards the end of this year or next year is to actually get a nice-ish table and chairs there but but for now I've got what I've got and that's it so I think that's what I'll do next time is I'll finish the path along the other side of the middle bed and I'll create that seating area continue to maintain what's there if I can get hold of some more compost then I will finish layering the compost on that middle bed that would be amazing I've got a few more things that need to go out at the allotment I've just ordered some dwarf French beans which I think I can probably get a harvest out of this year simply because it's 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 such a hot year and I think even if I put them in you know sort of within the first 10 days of August I should still get a harvest from them. I've also bought another little thing for the allotment but I'm not going to show you that until I take it to the allotment and we put it together so we'll save that for another time. But yeah, overall, I'm really happy. I'm so relieved that the problem with the allotment got sorted out and that it wasn't given to someone else. And thank goodness for that person who actually queried it and said, I think like this looks like someone is currently looking after it. Is it right that it's being given to me? I mean, thank goodness for that person, really. Otherwise, you know, I could turn up at the allotment and I had things pulled out or maybe some nice things added. I don't know, but... But yeah, generally speaking, very, very happy to still have my allotment. Anyway, I'm waffling. I'm on like nine minutes or something already, just sat here and I haven't, I haven't finished my tea off. So I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to leave you and we will meet back at the allotment maybe in a week or two. I've got to do, or not got to do, I want to do a container veg garden video that may well be the one that comes out after this one. And then I think I need to show you around the cottage garden out the back again. So possibly that. And then we will make a return to the allotment. So we're kind of cycling around all of the gardening that I'm doing. Still not feeling particularly up for creating any home-based videos. I don't know if I will be more inclined to do that over the autumn winter, perhaps. But for now, we just we're just... We're full throttle, well, not quite full throttle, we're kind of half throttle at um, a garden focused YouTube channel. So, yeah, if you're still here and you're still listening to, to all of this spiel and waffle, 
um, coming out of my mouth, then that's great. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for this long. And I really look forward to seeing you again soon.